Hi, I'm Eric Thornton from Chameleon Metadata, and thanks for joining as we walk through how to create and configure a virtual private cloud in Amazon Web Services. The course is divided into three parts, the core VPC and setup, and we'll add some EC2 instances to see how they behave. Part two, we're going to add something called an EC2 instance connect endpoint. And first, we're going to just create the endpoint and use it from the EC2 dashboard. Then, 13 through 17, we're going to configure some roles and policies and keys so that we can use uh, the endpoint from the command line interface, AWS CLI. Next, and this is what I use almost all the time, session manager. We need a, you know, some roles and enable a few things, and then we'll connect using session uh, manager and the command line interface. So with that, let's just first say that, number one, this URL will be in the notes. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, hit me up on this email here. We're at the home page here. There are several links. The first one is uh, a set of detailed instructions. This is what we'll be going through the, uh, for the majority of the course. And we're going to go through and everything down to the minute detail is in here except for you have to provide some naming. And I give you suggestions there. Now, we're going to start by creating a VPC, two VPCs. AWS has recently announced a wizard called uh, VPC and more. So we're going to do that, and it will automatically create through step nine everything involved, except it will not do six and seven. You'll understand when, as we go why that is. Then we're going to create it again manually and then spend through section nine replicating what the wizard did. So we've got the detailed instructions here. First one. This first step um, two references this guy here. So this is just the VPC container as we'll create it. There's no EC2 instances. And this is what the wizard does. And we'll start doing that. As we move forward, we're going to get to step nine. And we are going to add uh, some NAT gateways and elastic IPs and discuss how you communicate with the internet. Um, NAT gateways allow calls out for a website call or a Python PIP install, something like that. Internet gateway straight up allows two-way. So you could host a website here and call it from the internet or another VPC. You could not host a website here the way this is set up. Once we get to step nine, we are going to create some EC2 instances and plug them in. And you'll notice everything appears twice. Generally, you create things in isolation. And as we move through the course, we'll be plugging them into the ecosystem. Another thing you might notice, the two private subnets, three and four, are very distinctly segregated. Whereas the public subnets, one and two, are kind of blended. That's because they're going to share a route table and an internet gateway. And then finally, as we go through to part two, we're going to do the connection endpoint. So that's part two. In addition to all of this, we're going to have another way to connect. And we'll find until we put this up, we can't connect to the private EC2s even from the console. And then finally, in part three, my preferred method is managing the instances with Systems Manager. So with that, we will, uh, for the rest of the course, probably spend the majority of time here. Oh, the last button, when we go through and uh, we talk about CIDR blocks for the VPCs, we're going to use this one. And I put this uh, subnet calculator showing you when you do the 16 that we'll have, you know, 10, 0, 0, 1, to 10 0, 255, 254. We'll talk about that in greater detail in section two. So with that, thank you for joining. I look forward to seeing you as we uh, build the VPC twice, once with the wizard and once by hand.
Hi, welcome back. Now we're going to build the VPC containers, once with the wizard and once by hand. Again, this URL is in the, uh, the video notes. So I'm here, we're going to go to the setup instructions, which uh, for the remainder of the course, this is probably we're going to, where we're going to spend most of our time. We did the welcome. Um, one thing, I'm going to open up a console here. And one thing I noticed that I didn't go over in the last section real quick, I'm in New York City, so Virginia is close to me. Make sure your region is set to um, at least on the East Coast for New York City. You wouldn't want to pick California or Oregon, um, so check that. And with that, let's just, let's just jump right into making the container. Now, the first time we're going to do it, we're going to do it with the wizard, super easy, and we're actually going to name the VPC, VPC and more, because that's how we're going to create it. And we're going to leave everything with a default, except we're going to take off the um, endpoints. All these green boxes, when you see them with the red text, typing the red text will navigate to where you need to be to do the activity. So I'm going to type VPC in the search box. Then I'm going to click the menu item, and I'm just going to click the button, create VPC, and follow the instructions. So first, in the search box, VPC. And now I'll click on VPC. And then menu item, I'm just following the instructions. This one was uh, reset for this video, so there's nothing here. We're going to create a VPC. The rest of the course, we're going to do it this way, where it's one step at a time. And so we'll go through and create the subnets. We'll create the internet gateway, the security groups, all of that. But the wizard's going to do it all for us with this VPC and more. First, as I said, we're going to rename it VPC and more. So we know that this is the VPC and more built with the wizard. And you'll see it's proposing, because I'm in the North Virginia region, it's going to use US East 1A and 1B, make sure it's close to you. It's going to create a shared route table. Now, if we look over at the um, step two, that's this shared route table that will be used by the public um, subnets. So it's going to create that, and it's going to create route tables for each of the privates as we've done here. So the, the picture is where we're going to go. And then it's going to have the internet gateway, which is here in this picture. We're going to take this endpoint off for now and make it exactly like this picture. So when we're done, the privates for this part are going to dead end at the route table. That'll make a lot more sense. But for now, we're going to take off the endpoint and we're going to handle endpoints in section, uh, I'm sorry, part two. We're going to leave everything else um, as, a, uh, as it is. We're just taking off that VPC endpoint. And now you'll notice we've still got the four subnets, but the private dead ends at its route table and the private 1A dead ends at it. You notice that the two are still sharing and going to the Internet Gateway. So it's, it's this picture. Um, in a nutshell, with the four subnets created and plugged in. So with that said, let's just do it. And we're going to hit the Create VPC at the bottom button, and we'll view the VPC. This resource map is your friend, and then we're going to go through and do one called, we'll call it uh, Tutorial VPC. Um, now, we are going to do it the long way and if you notice these show the dark and blue lines on the connections but in the proposal we had connections here one of the problems with doing your job if all you know how to do it is with the wizard is you might say hey none of this got connected to the VPC but after this course we'll know we can click on the resource map go directly to that subnet and see, yes, indeed, it's connected to it. But this is just one instance where, you know, not knowing the back end plumbing could be a problem. So, with that said, let's go back and we've done the method one 
and now we have to check that the uh, DHCP and DNS settings are right. So we're going to go to, again, we're going to go to uh, your VPCs. We only have one. Check it. Actions. Edit VPC. Make sure both these bad boys are checked. All right. Once that's done, we're good. Back to the instructions. Now what we're going to do is we are going to um, build it by hand, and we're going to talk about CIDR blocks for a moment. So just following the instructions, create the VPC. I'm going to call this Tutorial VPC. And uh, actually, let's just make it all lowercase. Tutorial VPC, CIDR block. What is a CIDR block? If, if you notice, it's saying 10, proposing 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So let's go over here, and on the uh, rightmost button is the subnet, and let's see what that gets us. 10.0.0 and 24. Now, as we go through this, you'll see that the, the wizard likes to do things with 20 and 128. I'm not a fan of this. So with this 24, divide by 3. Uh, I'm sorry, divide by 8, and you get 3. So what this is telling us is everything in this subnet will have an internal address starting with 10.0.0. What that shows us is we'll have the... Um, uh, oh, I didn't update it. I'm sorry. What we'll have is uh, the only that last node is for us because this 24 locks it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to call this 16, and you'll notice this will only lock the first two nodes. And now we've got these two to play with. And I'll just go over it here. We'll talk briefly, but as we go through we are going to go one, two, three, four there, and then lock it, and then each subnet will have um, 200, well, count on 250. Amazon nails a couple of these for their own use. So I generally use 250 as the number here. So this will give us uh, 250 on this subnet, and then the next one will just make it the two, <clears throat> same number, different subnet. So that's what we're going to do there. Like I just said, we're going to make the VPC 16. So every internal private IP in this VPC will have 10.0. Uh, we're not going to get into se uh, v IP version 6 because not everyone can handle that. So we generally, until they run out of the V4 addresses, we're going to create the VPC. Now let's look at our resource map. We created the VPC, and you'll see it created its default route table, and we'll find out later it created also a default security group. But if we go back, the wizard actually uh, created the whole, whole kit and caboodle, so that's everything through step 9 except for the NAT gateway and the IP. So with that, um, we've only got one more thing left to do, and we're going to go into the newly created VPC and make sure that the DHCP and the DNS is all on there. there DNS, I should have said. So we want both of those on, and now we're groovy, and we are done with Section 2. Next section, we'll do the subnets. See you then. And on to section three, we're going to create four VPC subnets. I'll go back and we will look at the original picture. We're going to create these four now. Later on, we'll attach them via a route table um, to the net, uh, internet gateway. But for right now, let's just go through it. We're going to, you know, just follow the instructions on this one. We can type in subnets up here in the search window, or since we're in the VPCs and it's one of the features, I can get there the same. So either one. 
Now we notice that the three, uh, I'm sorry, the four subnets that were created by the wizard are shown. And uh, if you want, you can go punch these into the uh, subnet calculator. And uh, it's not my favorite. I, I like to keep these at a multiple of eight. So you go 16 for the VPC and 24 for the subnet. But again, that's just my preference from having done this for a while. So let's go through and create the subnets. We're going to select the VPC, and that's our tutorial VPC. We're going to give the subnet a name, and that name is in the instructions. So we're going to have a public US East 1A and US East 1B and a private East 1A and East 1B. So this one will be in East 1A. That we don't touch. There's nothing to change. We did that when we created the VPC. And quickly, if you notice, the first one we're going to do 10.0.1 and lock it at 24. And we'll just go down. The next one's 2 right here and 3 and 4 for the others. So let's just do that now. This is the first one. And so that means everything, that 24 locks the first three. Everything in this subnet will have an internal IP address starting with 10.0.1. And you'll see how we go on. And now, since this is a public subnet, we're going to check that. And I'm just, this is all in the uh, instructions. And we're going to make sure to auto assign an, an um, IPv4 address and uh, turn on the DNSA record. And we're going to save it. And then as you go down, it's just the same thing over and over. We're only going to do, you notice the two public subnets have that extra step. We will not auto assign on the others. So you just saw the first one. We're going to go do the second one. And this time we're going to do it a little different so you can see you could do all four like that. But what I'm going to do, and this is probably when you've been doing this for some time, I would have just started with four, but I wanted to follow the instructions. So in this one, this is going to be the public US East 1B. We'll put that one in US East 1B. And as per the instructions, this will be 2 slash 24. And we'll go down, and this one, we just need to make him private, and we'll have a private East 1B. So we're just mimicking what the uh, VPC wizard did when it created the VPC and more. And then the last one is 1B on the private side. And this will be four. And we create the subnets. And if we clear the filters and bring this down a little bit, you can see we have public east 1A, private 1A, public uh, private 1B, and public 1B. So, and and also notice how the this is so much cleaner. You're going to hear maybe a couple times during this tutorial. I do things if I'm going to have to look at it in 3 in the morning and I'm tired from having just been woken up. So rather than play these games with splitting the node with the 20, I just go by variables of 8. So the last thing we do have to do, though, is we have to go on the public 1B. We did it before on the 1A and turn on the IP and the DNS. We will not do this on the, uh, the private subnets. So we have now just created all four subnets, but they're off here to the side and we haven't plugged it in. When we come back, we will um, create the internet gateway and um, go forward with that. So. See you uh, in section four. Welcome back. We're going to create the internet gateway and attach it to our new VPC. Before we move on, just a, a note on my naming convention. I found it really helps, and you'll see I build on things. So 
I generally start with the VPC name and then what the component is. The reason for this, you see that's the SUBN, four digits, except for the elastic IP, I use EIP, um, internet gateway, and security groups. The reason is if you're in a very large organization, you might get uh, different parts of these, the security groups, the gateways, and the subnets on different reports. By putting the VPC name at the front, it's an old COBOL programmer trip from the 80s, they all sort together. So on this one, we're going to have the VPC name and INTG. So we're going to go Internet Gateway, and then we're just going to do it, and then we'll attach it. Let's see. So we can put Internet Gateway up here, or it is one of the features. This is the one the VPC wizard did. We're going to create our own, and it's tutorial VPC INTG. Now with this subnet, we had more, but you only get one internet gateway for VPC, so we don't have to have a suffix. Now when we go back to the list of internet gateways, we notice it's detached. This uh, was attached when we used the wizard. The wizard did that. We're going to have to do ours manually, and we're going to attach it. And since the VPC and more VPC is already attached. We only have one option. And that's the Internet Gateway, and it's attached. So with that, we're done with the Gateway, and we'll move on to the security groups in the next section. Now that we've set up the subnets in the Internet Gateway, we're going to create four security groups. We're going to have one for each subnet. This will allow maximum configurability. If you go through um, the instructions, we're going to open up four ports. And uh, certain, uh, just a warning, you probably don't want to follow this. Certainly, you wouldn't want to leave things wide open. But most places don't want port 22 open because you can share that key file. So there's, there's a couple of reasons. This is just the lab, and I'm showing you how to do the plumbing. So um, take it with a grain of salt, but this isn't the recommendation for how to do yours. And uh, let's just follow the instructions now. So this is where we left off. We're going to just type the green text, and we'll type security group. And um, we notice that it's shown twice. It takes you to the same thing. We can do VPC, EC2, it doesn't matter. And these are the two that were created, one by the wizard <clears throat> and one by us. They're created by default when you set up a VPC container. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a security group, and we're just going to follow the, uh, this should be public. We're just going to follow the steps one by one. I'm going to reuse it. We're going to attach it to the tutorial VPC. Again, AWS is saying it's probably not cool to leave everything wide open. All traffic can come from anywhere or go to anywhere. <clears throat> um, not, again, student lab, so just beware. Now, we could go through and do it as it said, but we're going to hit the add rule four times and we're just going to add the ICMP allows to ping and you see again it's saying probably not cool to let this from anywhere but it's a lab uh, SSH is going to give us port 22 and we're going to need both the HTTP normal and secure and we'll do that and we'll create the security group now we go back to the list the first thing I want you to do is remember don't leave these blank. We'll come back and deal with the defaults in a minute. But we've already got that in the copy and paste. So now we've got a, a nice, reasonable name. Now, what we're going to do this time, rather than do all the actions uh, explicitly, we're going to copy it to a new security group. It does all of our four ports we want. And in this case, 
we're going to call it US East 1B. And we're going to attach it to our tutorial VPC. And create that. And we'll do the other two the same way. Uh, sorry, I've got to highlight one. Oh, and I almost forgot my own advice. I want to name that. Okay. Now we'll copy. And it's showing us the rules. This we're going to call private 1A. Copy that, put it there. And we'll need a third place because we'll create the security group and then edit the dash. Okay, so here he is. Private 1. Okay, Private 1A. And we're going to just do the last one. 1B. 1B and the tutorial VPC. Oh, you see now in this case, I uh, I didn't um, do the copy. I said create a new group. I could have just I could have just done them again, but what I'm going to do is is do the copy. It's it's less errors. Um, so real world example so we're going to put it on the tutorial and then it's got those four because we copied go back to the security group we're going to refresh bring this down and we want to just update this name and that's 1b now let's look at these because if you don't do this this just becomes a nightmare on a large installation so what we're going to look at is if we see, remember I said all it cares about is the VPC IDs. So since I know I did these in tutorial, I know this is the default for our tutorial. And since this has a different um, ID, it's the other one. So what I'm going to do here is just type default. These little things um make a big difference and then this one we'll put that oh let's spell it right vpc and more secg default i got some fat fingers here today all right there we go so now everything's nice and neat. Just trust me, you don't want to leave the, uh, the hyphens there. So with that said, we've gone through Section 5. It's only shown once, but we just do it four times, one for each, um, each subnet. And uh, now let's go on and create the elastic IPs on the next section. Uh, these are IPs that don't change over time and you can't have a NAT gateway without an elastic IP. So I'll see you in section six. Now it's time to create the elastic IP addresses. We're going to use these elastic IP addresses for the NAT gateway. It requires an elastic IP as I record this. Elastic IPs uh, addresses are ad uh, IP addresses that will not change until you release them. There is a charge for them unless they're attached to an EC2, in which case you get charged for the EC2 instead. By default, as I record this, Amazon gives you five. I think if you, you can request more, but if I think if you need more than five elastic IPs, you really need to rethink the architectural approach you're taking. So what we're going to do is we're going to create one for each of the private subnets. Now this gets a little bit tricky because the NAT gateway, it requires an elastic IP. The NAT gateway lives on a public subnet, even though it's for private subnets to communicate. So what we're going to do is we are going to 
create one elastic IP for each of the public subnets. And let's see what that looks like in a picture. I'm going to the VPC setup part one, step nine. So the two publics will share a route table, and the entire VPC shares the uh, internet gateway. And um, those two will have solid lines, two way communication to and from outside of the VPC, the internet, other VPCs. Now, I said that the NAT gateway is going to live, number one will be on subnet one, and number two will be on subnet two. Those are public subnets. We're going to give them each an elastic IP address because they need them. So when we do this, when something on this subnet, an EC2 instance, wants to get to the internet, the route table will send it to the internet gateway, uh, the NAT gateway, and that NAT gateway, instead of the internal, these would be 10.0.3 and 10.0.4, it's going to use the elastic IP addresses for one way out. So I don't want to beat that to death because I think it'll become clear as we do it. So the first thing we're going to do is look at how we are going to name the elastic IP. We're going to name it the same thing as our subnet and we're just going to put EIP in front and we're going to put the allocated IP. We'll see what that means in a moment. So for right now I know that uh, I'm going to do this EIP so I'm just grabbing it so you don't have to be tortured watching me type. So I could type elastic IP up in the search box or I can go this way. We have none. I'm going to allocate one. Make sure this, we're in New York City, so Virginia is our close one. And uh, just make sure that it's not across the country or in a different country. And then all you got to do is allocate the IP, the elastic IP. Now, a lot of the logs, when things go down late at night, are only going to have the IP address in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add EIP because eventually we're going to put this elastic IP on the subnet for public US East 1. The other thing we're going to do is grab this and come back and put it to the end. And now let's look at how we read this. I have a VPC with an elastic IP address this is one of the only times I don't use four. And that elastic IP address is eventually going to live on a subnet that's public US East 1A and have this IP address. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just grab that part and copy it. And we're going to allocate another. Remember, this one has to be the same as that one or it'll get expensive. And we're going to allocate. And we're going to clear the filters. Now on this one, we're going to go 1B hyphen. Oh, no, that well, didn't work. Got to hit save. 1B hyphen save. And then we'll grab the IP address. And we'll put that at the end. So again, if you got consultants coming in or... Uh, you're taking over for someone on vacation. You got 256 characters. Don't be cheap. So at this point, we're done with our elastic IPs and we've renamed them. And uh, next, we're going to use those elastic IPs as we create the NAT gateways. We're going to use two of them and uh, we'll do a quick revisit on the picture. And now we'll use those elastic IPs we just created to create a NAT gateway. Actually, we're going to create two of them. I'm going to go quickly to the VPC setup part one, step nine. And the way this will work is anything on the private subnet, when we get the route tables all together, we're going to put one NAT gateway, which needs an elastic IP, on public subnet one. We're going to put the other NAT gateway, which will use Elastic IP address 2 that we just created 
on public subnet 2. When these need to talk to the internet to get information from the internet, download a file, do a Python PIP install, something like that, they will route that. Remember, this all these will be 10.0.3. something, 10.0.4. something. So when I need a file, let's say I need to go download a stock quote, whatever, I will make a request. It'll route through this route table <clears throat> to the Internet Gateway. And at this point, the 10.0.3 address will be replaced with the Elastic IP address until while it goes out and grabs it and retrieves, retrieves whatever it is. Same with the other private subnet. So that's how all this works. Everything goes through the Internet Gateway in the end. And now, again, it's pretty uh, straightforward. What we're going to do is we're just going to add NATG to the EIP name, the Elastic IP. So let's take the first one. I just put it in a notepad there. And let's go to NAT gateways. We can either put it in this search box up here, or since it's a VPC feature, we can do that. We're going to create a NAT gateway. We are going to call it the elastic IP that's going to be on US East 1 subnet public and we're going to give it this address. So we are going to look for, be careful, you got to look for both the VPC and the public. So this tutorial, I'm uh, sorry, this IP is going to be on this subnet and you see how having this common prefix we want connectivity type of public and we're going to get the IP elastic IP that ends in 162 and that's the one we said will be for the US East 1 and that's really all there is to it now this will take about 15 minutes before it goes from uh, pending to available and in the meantime, let's just create the other one. And I'll grab that. And so this is going to be the US East 1B. And when we name the Elastic IP, and guess what? I've got to go back and rename that. I've got to put NAT Gateway in there. We'll go back and fix the other one. So this one's going to be on tutorial public 1B, this one. And for this one, we're going to do the 18. They match because we put the, the subnet and region in there. Now, when I go back to here, I do just want to, because I forgot to do this, NATG. And now as you, let's refresh. Oh, I don't think I hit save. Oh, I did, okay. As we read this, we've got a VPC called Tutorial VPC. It has a NAT gateway that's using an elastic IP on a subnet that lives on this availability zone and has this IP address. Because remember, a lot of times you'll get log information with just the IP so you can find it this way. So with that we've finished the NAT gateway and uh, I'll be back in a little bit and let's look at this because next we're going to set up these three route tables and then program them in to attach the different subnets. The two publics will share one and the privates will each have their own. So once the um, NAT gateway is all set up in about 15 minutes or instantaneously in your world, I'll be back. Thanks for joining. Well, we're at the point where we need to create the route tables and actually start attaching everything and putting the plumbing in place so information can throw, throw, flow through the components of the VPC. Now let's just take a quick moment and look at the um, VPC setup part one, step nine. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the three route tables. 
We're going to have one called Public U.S. East 1. It won't have an A or a B because it's for all of the public internet, uh, subnets. Then we're going to have a private U.S. East 1A and a private U.S. East 1B. Then the next thing we need to do is attach this to the internet gateway so it routes things that way. And we need to attach this to the NAT gateway. So let's do that right now. So what we're going to do is we can type route tables or we just go right in. Now we can see that the VPC and more has uh, already created the three. And what we're going to do now, by looking at this, we can tell that the 41 is the VPC and more. And we're just going to do this, Control C. And remember, we're just using the ID. This has to be the tutorial because we haven't done anything with it. And we're going to go default. You want to get rid of those hyphens whenever you can. And then what we're going to call this is a tutorial VPC. And I use a different instead of their three default so let's get that out of the way and now we can sort and we're all good to go now let's just go through this is really um, not so bad we're going to create three route tables and you know one for everybody in the public and one for each private so let's do that right now and we'll just uh, go down and um, create the route tables. Now I did put this in here in the notepad and we'll go back here and we'll attach this to the tutorial. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to um, do the, the uh, public US East one for the tutorial then we're going to do, we'll do this East 1A and make this private. And then we'll go back and look at the, uh, the picture. Put him on the tutorial VPC. Make a new one. And create a route table. And this will be 1B on that VPC. So now you get the default which is created when we create the VPC we're not gonna mess with that but now we have one for the publics and one each for the sorry there we go for the privates at this point they're just sitting over here we've created them and they uh, they need to be attached so the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna let's see here We're going to click it and edit routes. Now, if we look at this picture again, the route table by default, I've got it showing this, but it'll talk to the VPC. Um, we're going to add so it can talk to the internet gateway. So what we're going to add a route, and we're going to say, I don't care where it comes. Again, this isn't what you probably do at home and we're going to go for an internet gateway. Now we've only got one internet gateway for this one and we're going to save the changes. So at this point in this picture we've just connected so I'm showing two arrows but it's just one pipe that we can either go from these two subnets which are going to use these route, this route table either to the VPC resources there or the internet gateway and we're going to do something similar on the uh, the two private ones and we'll just click that and we'll edit the routes we're going to do the same thing but this time and in fact let's go back a second here this is the private US East 1B that's important so this one here we are going to add a route 
oh, to remove the second one. It's going to be from anywhere. And this time we're going to use a NAT gateway. And we're going to use the private East 1A. And save the changes. Go back to the route table. Oh, you know what? I messed that up. So let's edit the routes. Because this was 1B. 1B. You see why those names help. And now we're going to go back to the route table. And we're going to edit the route. This will go to 1A. Because we just did 1B. And in that gateway. And this is the 1A. Save. So, refresh. And that's all there is to it. Now, when we look at the picture, we've connected this route table to this NAT gateway, this one to this one, and this route table to the internet. But we have not connected the route table to the subnets yet. So, we'll go back. So, we've done this part. We've created. And uh, next, we're going to do step uh, nine and we're going to go into the subnets so in this case subnets we're going to sort them and we're going to go into public it doesn't really matter the two publics are going to share a route table action edit route table association and right now it's at the default this is a public, so they're both going to use without the suffix, and it goes to the Internet Gateway. The next one's going to use the same. It's public US East 1A. Edit uh, Route Table Associations. On this one, same public. Now we're going to do the private US East 1B. And this route table, private US East 1B. And you see that's using the NAT gateway. And we'll do the private US East 1A. Private US East 1A. And we've saved it. Now before we sign off, let's look at this is the VPC and more. Remember, we took off everything from the privates. We'll do the endpoints in part two. But for here, the publics both share a route table like ours, and the privates dead end. Now, when we go to our VPC, we notice that now we have the default we got rid of. Originally, everything went through the default. The two publics, just like the wizard, now, on the wizard, these dead end, but we've just added a NAT gateway with an EIP, and if you look here, this is the East 1A and East 1B. So, that's where we are now, and uh, next, what we're going to do is, when we're here, we've actually gone through steps nine. So, at this point, most of these VPC courses that I've reviewed, they do some Kung Fu and you don't know how they actually did it. And they're like, look, I got a v an EC2 instance and it works perfectly. But we're going to go through and see the problems by connecting with the EC2 dashboard for private subnets and how we fix them. So with that, we've made some pretty good progress. And now I think um, when we look at these resource maps, We've pretty much mimicked, plus we've added the NAT gateway and the elastic IPs. So we're ready to create EC2 instances, and that would be step 11. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create four EC2 instances, and then we're going to assign them each to a subnet, and then see how they behave from the Internet using my laptop. So I'll see you in uh, section 10. We'll create a key pair. And then we will move on and create four EC2 instances. Thanks for joining.
Welcome back. We're about to start step 10, creating the uh, key pairs which we need for the EC2. But before we do that, I'm going to take a moment and look at where we are at this point through uh, step 9. Remember we created the VPC twice, once with the wizard and once with the um, by hand. Now the wizard, we dead-ended the private subnets and for ours we actually added 6 and 7 which the wizard did not do. So let's just take a look at, uh, we're going to go into VPC and my your VPCs, my VPCs. So now we're going to click the first one. This is the VPC and more the wizard did it. And look at the resource map. We can see we have the two publics and the two privates. Both of the publics go through a public route table and are routed to the VPC and more gateway, internet gateway. On ours, we are two private ones. I'm sorry, this one and this one. The default we don't play with. But on the uh, private networks, they dead end at the route table. Now, if we go back and we look at the one we did, and we look at the resource map, it's the same thing except our privates each have their own NAT gateway. So with this, we can get out. And so what we've done, if we come back to the uh, original, we're through step nine at this point. And the VPC and more wizard does everything the same as us, except we've added an elastic IP and a NAT gateway for each of the privates. And uh, we're then going to look at uh, how we connect EC2s. Now, step 11, which are the next two we're going to do, we're going to bring four EC2 instances, and we are going to attach one each to the two public and the two private. So the four will go across, and um, we're gonna, then going to see how the plumbing works in. But before we do that, we have to create these EC2s. And so let's go back, and we're on step 10. And remember, this is in the notes. I'll put all of the uh, links in the notes, but uh, let's close that. This VPC and more setup opens the mind map. And then we're at step 10 at this point. There we go. So. The, the PEM file we're going to need because at one point we're going to uh, SSH into this just to see how it's done. And this is the point that I've found is a shortcoming on most of these. Yeah, your VPC works fine. We just looked at it. Everything's there. It's perfect. It runs. But now how do you get EC2s on it and how do you connect to it? Well, the first thing we're going to need is a key pair. And for the key pair... What we're going to do is we're going to go up to the search box and type key pairs. And we're going to go into the key pairs. Now, I don't have any. So, there's we could create, in fact, let's do it that way. I'm going to create, um, we're going to call it EC201. So, on our picture we are going to make this EC2 1, 2, 3, and 4. And just to make it, uh, we'll call it uh, public US East 1A. And in fact, I won't need that in that case. So we're going to do that. We want a PEM. You'd use this for PPK, but if you're going to use SSH commands on, on the command line interface, you need a PEM file. I'm going to just grab that for later. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the key pair. Now, this is important that, uh, that you do this right. You can see I was messing around, so we're going to do that as 
the EC2. And if you look, I'm very clear, don't lose this file because you will need it. And in, in our case, we're going to create four key pairs. And this will be for 1B, PEM file. And we'll do that. Uh, we're going to put that as 1B, PEM. We're going to create another one. But this time, it'll be private. And PEM file. And create that key pair and save that in downloads and the last one I should have copied it before private 1b PEM and create the key pair now I'm on Windows so it goes on download um, generally if you look I've got uh, an Amazon AWS and I've got access keys in there um, but for now I'm just putting it in my downloads so now I have these four access keys and we've gone through so the big thing is we're gonna have going back to the picture we're gonna use a different PEM on each one of these four and that's the way I like to do it I like each EC2 server we'll see later on we don't even need to SSH in because if I go down to my downloads, I could share these files with other people. So I don't really have that much control. That's why a lot of shops do not open, uh, do not open port 22. So with that, we finished. In the next section, we're going to create the EC2 instances. I'll see you then. Now that we've spent all this time creating a virtual private cloud and doing all the back-end plumbing, we now have um, key pairs for our four EC2 instances. And going back, we're going to hit the uh, part 11, because when we're done here, we'll be with part 11. So we're going to create four EC2s and assign them to a subnet and let's do that now I'm just going through a couple quick notes it's important that you make sure that this region is set correctly we're in New York City so we're using Virginia make sure that's it the other thing is we're gonna pick a free tier eligible but just a heads up that's 750 hours so after a little over a month they start billing you so know that that's a case so now it's a pretty straightforward I'll just walk through what we're going to do. Um, a lot of questions come up on what kind of machine image. Uh, I would always suggest using an Amazon machine image, an AMI. The reason is later on we are um, going to use the session manager, part of systems manager, and it gets the agent uh, pre-installed. If you do like Ubuntu, you can do it but you just have to install the um, SMS agent or SSM agent separately so we're just gonna go through we're gonna pick a small free one and then you notice these options boxes there's gonna be one for the VPC in the subnet so like we've done all the time we're going to use EC2 in the subnet name and that way it's it's readable so and this security group will be the same because we've got one per subnet so let's go through and do that so we can do EC2 in the search and we come in there and we see we have no instances running but remember we created the elastic IPs in um, the VPC when we did elastic IP as a search it came up twice they're the same so is security groups so what we're going to do is either click this or go to instances. We do not have any. So we're going to launch an instance. And using the naming convention, in this tutorial, we're going to have a VPC on this subnet. And then from the subnet and all that, I can reassemble re, uh, a complete picture of this thing. 
We're going to use an Amazon Linux, an AMI with 64-bit. We're not going to change much here. Instance type, doesn't much matter as long as it's free. Uh, now, remember the key pairs. So what this is going to be is for public US East 1. So we're going to do that. The other thing, you almost always have to edit this. It picks for you. For example, wrong VPC. Then the next thing, it is on public US East 1A, so we want that. And it's the tutorial VPC, which will be driven by what you do here. We do want auto enable, but we already made our security groups. And so we're in public 1A. <clears throat> oh, sorry, wrong box. And we want the security group for the subnet. I, you know, I don't know if this is the best way, but it works for me, where you can read everything and we see that the subnet and the EC2 both have a similar name with, uh, with, with all that in it. So with that done, we're going to launch the instance. And this will take a while. So we have the one instance, and sometimes when you go back, you have to refresh. So it's pending, and then it'll go to um, uh, online, and then the status check. So we've got a few more minutes for this, so I'm going to stop it here. The only other thing is, when we come back, I will have run this same process um, three more times, and at that point, I'll have all, three, all four EC2 instances each will be plugged into its associated subnet. So with that, I will uh, see you back shortly for um, the uh, demo on how we actually get into these, and we'll find out. Sadly, we can't get into our private subnets, because if you remember, there's no way to get inward, only out at this point. So we'll be back in a minute, and we'll do all that, and... Uh, move on and overcome it over here with the EC2 instance connect endpoint. So I'll see you in a moment. Well, it's been a few minutes and we can see now that uh, all four of the EC2 instances are set up. We've got uh, East 1A, private and public, and US East 1B, private and public. You'll see they're running. You need to wait till the two of two checks is passed. And then you'll see that we've assigned the um, public IP addresses only to the public subnets. And I thought it might just be a good time now to look back at our VPCs. Remember we had the VPC and more made by the wizard. And if we look at the resource map, it went and uh, if we go over here, part nine is where it went to. So it went and it created four subnets, two public, two private. It did not put uh, the NAT gateways on, but, uh, oh, sorry, wrong one. And, um, We've only, we've only got an internet gateway. If we go back and we look at the, uh, the one we've created, it works out to be the same, except that we have the NAT gateways, so the private runs to its own NAT gateway, and each one a has its own private NAT gateway. So if we look back at, this has changed a little bit. I added this uh, suffix afterwards. So the W means it was done with the wizard. M means manually. A lot of things we just mimicked, but the wizard did not create elastic IPs and gateways. So we did that here, and when we went through the route table, we connected them. So at this at this point in uh, in in the game, we've got the four. Um, EC2 instances, one on each uh, subnet, and two public and two private. So that's what we're doing here. Now in the demo, we're going to go through and we're connect to them. 
And from this point on, in my opinion, is what makes this tutorial different than most. Because normally this is where they leave you and you're like, wait, I can't get onto the privates. So let's take a look. We're just going to go through these steps so I won't be going back there. But remember, we've got privates and publics. So first, let's connect to the public US East 1A. We hit the connect. And then this is the EC2 instance connect. And I know it's very close. This is EC2 instance connect endpoint. So this way we're connecting exactly through the dashboard with no plumbing. And generally your user is EC2 user. And this is the public IP address assigned. And we'll get a, uh, a, a Linux prompt. And there you go. So now we're on. And we remember, our public 1A was 10.0.1. This particular instance is 10.0.1.49. And if we do a, uh, a curl um, check IP dot Amazon AWS.com, we get our public IP address. So this is the private IP, and then this is the public IP. And uh, so that works fine. So we'll close that. We don't need the VPC. Now let's try and get on to the private. And we are going to go connect. And you find out there's no public IP address, so we can't connect. We don't have any inst uh, EC2 instance connect endpoints. So we can't do that either. So as we look here, we went through, we connected first to a public. We got it. The other one, we're dead in the water. So we have our four. And by the way, this will be, behave for, the, for the, uh, the other private, the 1B, if it's the same thing. So what we need to do now, you've seen we've done that. We, um, we're going to come over here now. And we're going to do what's called an EC2 instance connect point in the other uh, in, in the other um, section, section 12 and 13. And before we do that, one quick, we're going to, um, I'm sorry, this is where I want to be at the console. And we're going to go into VPC because at this point, we don't need that wizard anymore, VPC. We did it, remember the VPC and more, um, just so we could mimic it with our tutorial. So how do we get rid of a VPC? We delete it, and all we need to do is type delete. Now, quick point here. That's easy, and it'll delete all the back end things like the route tables and so forth. The problem with deleting ours is you won't be able to delete the tutorial VPC because they're attached to NAT gateways. And when you try and remove the, the elastic IPs or release them, they won't release because they're attached to NAT gateways. So when we do end up deleting this one, we're going to have to delete um, first the NAT gateway, then the elastic IPs, and then we can go and delete it. I just thought that was uh, worth, worth discussing for a moment. And so when we come back, what we're going to do is we are going to um, go into the EC2 connection endpoint, and we will set up the, um, the endpoint and a policy with, uh, with which to use it. And then after we get that policy, we'll try it again, what we just did. And when we come back and do it the second time, here's another shortcoming with money of these videos. We're going to do it as a root user. No problem. As a programmer, it's a bummer. It doesn't work. We're going to fix that. And then we're going to try it again. So when we come back, we will create the EC2 instance connect endpoint and uh, I'll see you then all right welcome back 
as we just saw a moment ago, uh, we're able to connect using the connect button on the publics because they have a public IP address. But however, when you try the same thing from a private subnet, there's no um, there's no public IPv4 address assigned, so it can't connect. There is another uh, option called connect using the EC2 instance connect endpoint. It has endpoint after this name. This is just a raw connect through the dashboard. And then this one is going to actually use an endpoint. So let's take a minute. And now we're going to go to the VPC setup part two button. This address is in the uh, YouTube notes. And it's the same picture, except this time we're going to make uh, instance connect directly through. The only thing we're going to need is port 22, but we don't need the NAT gateway. In fact, this will work without NAT gateways. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up this new piece of plumbing that will allow us to connect using an endpoint. So for that, the first thing we want to do is once again check our region. I'm in New York City, so North Virginia is it for me. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is make this security group, but this security group, remember, they're firewalls, so we're only going to use the EICE endpoint, use this group for that, and all it needs is port 22. Now, there is another case where you may want to use 3389. These are the only two ports supported, and that would be if you're in a remote desktop situation on the VPN, uh, VPC, sorry. But in our case, we're going to open 22 and uh, from anywhere. And remember, th this isn't a security course. You probably don't want to leave things wide open. But I'm just teaching you not security, how to just do this. So let's just go through, through it first. We're going to create a security group and add port 22 to that security group. So as the instructions say security groups either one they're the same and sometimes it messes up it was behind so I had to click over here and you see in fact let's get rid of this because <laughs> this is take two so here we go so we will get rid of that and he's gone and now we're just going to follow the first part of the instructions. Let me just dial that down a little bit. There's a zoom bar here on the lower right. So we're going to do the security group, add port 22, and leave the outbound wide open. So let's do that. We're going to create a security group, and we're going to name it. Oh, actually, that's, uh, there we go. That's what I'm going to call it using the naming scheme. And we'll put it in the that. Now we only have one VPC because we deleted it. Outbound rules, we're going to leave wide open. We're going to add a rule. And we're going to go SSH. And again, anywhere. It's, it's squawking because you really shouldn't do this. But we're not here to learn security. We're here how to make it work. So... Now I have my port 20, and I'm going to copy that because I've been saying you know how much we hate uh, uh, those dashes. And again, when you read this, it's this VPC. It's a security group that's covering this end, uh, endpoint, which is an EICE endpoint. There's also, um, there's also S3 endpoints. And we're only going to do port 22 only. Now, if a contractor comes in or a new person, they can read this. You get 256 characters, so there's no reason to be cheap with the, uh, the digits, as they say. So now over here, we're going to create the endpoint. And what we're going to do with the endpoint, this is pretty straightforward, but it is going to take uh, about 15 minutes, like... Uh, the NAT gateway. 
And we're going to use that security group we just created before. So let's just follow. Remember, this green gets us where we need to go from anywhere. So we're going to get rid of that and do VPC. And we're in the VPC. And we're going to do endpoints. And we have no endpoint. So we're just going to go right through. And you see this arrow here. So we are going to use uh, we're going to use this endpoint later and create a policy for it. So when you see these, there's a link to it with these arrows. But this is pretty straightforward. So we'll just go create the endpoint. Uh, create endpoint. And we want this to be an EC2 instance connect endpoint. I'm just following the instructions. At this point, we only have one VPC because we deleted the, the wizard. We're going to grab this port 22 only. That's the one we created. And that's what we're talking about here for the security group. And in the, uh, in the subnet, we're going to pick a, uh, a private subnet. doesn't matter. Um, I generally go with a private to keep this you know, from possibly getting uh, hacked. And then we're going to give it a nice name and get rid of that and get rid of that. And that's the endpoint name. OK. And so now we've, we've got this uh, endpoint. And if we look here, it's pending. So we've now completed, uh, we've completed step 12. Now in step 13, we're going to create an IAM policy just for the EC2 Instance Connect endpoint when you're using it from the uh, AWS command line interface. And we'll do that next, but before we do that, I want to wait for the, uh, the endpoint. Oh, and one other thing. You noticed when we named the endpoint, there's no suffix like most of them because you can only have one EICE endpoint for the entire VPC. So in about 15 minutes in my world, instantaneously in yours, I'll be back and uh, we'll do step 13 and create the policy. And then, like I say, just to give you a little jump ahead, once the endpoint is there, we don't need this policy if we're on as root, because root has everything. Um, then we're going to go on and we're going to log on as a programmer. And I'll show you what uh, permissions and find out that you can't log on. So then we're going to do a couple permissions. Uh, the policy we made in step 13, and then we're going to add an Amazon Manage policy. And then after that, we'll find out we can connect as the, I, I'm calling it a programmer user. It's just not logged on as, you, as root. So uh, we'll be back in a few moments, and we will create the policy. See you then. Okay, and it's been a few minutes, and let's go check on the endpoint that we created. As you can see, it's available, and we're ready to go. So, if we go now, before we do the demonstration, I just want to set something up a little beforehand. And uh, to do that, we're going to, um, let me make that a little bigger. We're going to create the IAM policy. Now, for this one, under step 13, there's a little link here. Mind map kind of restricts me as to how I, I do it. And don't know why GitHub's taking a while. OK. So in here, see, we're going to show you in a minute. Everything's working fine if you're logged on with root. But that's not really the way things normally go. So we're going to set up a policy that allows non-root users to connect using our tunnel. So we've got a couple, um, a couple different um, SIDs here, which are the different pieces of the policy. And so you can now just copy this raw file. 
And then uh, over here in Ultra Edit, I have um, put that raw file and, and let's just edit it now. So I'm going to go to uh, a notebook editor. And what we're going to do here, if you notice the original policy, it has a couple places and they all are with three stars. So you're going to want to leave all the quotes. The only thing you're going to want to do is go from the f first of three stars to the last trailing three stars. So we're going to do the region, the account ID, the endpoint ID, and the VPC or CIDR block. Now, as we're doing this, you're going to need your account ID. So what we're going to do, even though on the tutorial it'll, it'll be blurred out, um, we're going to go over here to almost any screen in Amazon, and you'll see we're signed on to the Chameleon Tutorials account. So we're going to drop that down, and our account ID is there, and we'll just hit this Copy Account ID, and then we can use it in other places. Now, in my case, I've preset this up so we change the region to US East 1 because I'm in New York City and that's what we use. This is the account ID which will be blurred in the video. This is the EC2 endpoint and where do I get the EC2 endpoint? I go over here and click and I can copy this and then I copy that endpoint ID. Um, we're, the other thing we're going to uh, fix is the IP addresses. Let's look at that. That's this one. Now, here's where things are a little bit, I don't know, I'm a geek maybe, but it, it's cool to me. Like, what we're going to do is say anyone who gets this policy can get into any of the uh, subnets or any IP that is uh, within our VPC because if you remember in the the uh, the first lecture section two we made that our CIDR block now let's say we only wanted a policy and this is how I do it in real life I would generally make four policies and I'd go 1.24 and then I'd go 2.24 3.24 and the last one was 4.24 which means, in this case, inside the VPC, I'm giving anyone access to a private IP that's 10.0.4, um, and then this locks those first nodes. So I'd have about 250. Remember, Amazon nails a couple for administrative uses. But in ours, we're going to do the entire CIDR block for the VPN. This is why there's a lot to this uh, security so I'm going to do a control A and control C just to copy that and now we're going to go back and what we're going to do I'm just right clicking here say so I can get another tab open and in this tab I am going to go to IAM and we are going to go to policies and in our policies and like I say, I'm, I'm just uh, going down this. We've got the policy. You've changed the four places where you need to. And then we're going to go create a policy. And then we'll do that right now. So create a policy. <clears throat> we're going to hit the JSON box. We're going to delete everything in there. And we're going to copy. Now I will show you if you're not very familiar with JSON say I add a comma here it's not gonna like that so it'll show you if there's errors um, but this this is coming right off the website and all I changed was those few things and then next and for our policy we're gonna call it the VPC name and we're gonna oh wrong one and we're gonna call it endpoint E I C E and uh, oh I'm sorry before that we want I A M P for I A M policy for the endpoint E I C E all right now if I was only doing a subnet I'd go on and say something like uh, 
10.0.2.0 slash 24. And now this endpoint would only be for the second subnet. Um, policy, I'm sorry. One endpoint for the whole thing, but the policy you need. And we're going to see how that comes into play in a minute. I'm just going to type it in the, ins in the description. So we've got that. And we're going to create the policy. And now that we've created the policy, we are uh, at the point where we're going to come back and do a demonstration. So I'll see you shortly. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration. Now as we're going to go through here, we're going to log on with the root user. And then we're going to log on later with a programmer user as an extra special bonus section. Most of these videos, remember at the beginning I said I've seen a lot of shortcomings in the VPC tutorials. Well, a lot of them do a neat little trick by logging on as root user, and so you don't have to deal with it, and then you go on to your job and nothing works. So we're going to log on as root user and see that we did in fact create the EICE endpoint correctly. And of course that's easy as root. But then we're going to log on as a programmer, and we'll find out it's not so easy. It's at this point we'll use the policy created in uh, step 13 to modify the permissions of an AWS programmer. So let us go back to the console. We'll go to EC2. Now I'm logged on as Chameleon Tutorials. That means I'm root here in my world. So we're going to go to the instances and as before we could connect to a public using the EC2 instance. However when we went and we tried to connect to a private and connect we get this message. So in the last couple steps we set up a uh, EICE EC2 instance connect endpoint and this is the EC2 instance connect. A lot of people say direct from the dashboard, even though both of these are. But here we're going to go through the endpoint, and we've only got uh, one endpoint here. So, of course, we're going to select it. Almost always, this is what we did when we created the EC2s, the EC2 user. So, I'm going to now connect, and remember that this is the private. US East 1A or 10.0.3.0 slash 24 when we did the CIDR block. So let's connect there. Remembering this is a private subnet. So as our private subnet, if we go to private US East 1, we see that our private IP address is 3.128. And that's how we're logged on here. Now, if you also remember, we're using a elastic IP. So if we come over, I'm just going to open a new window. And if we come over here and we do VPCs, and we go into VPC because elastic IP is one of its sub functions, and we see these are our two elastic IPs. And then again, the naming convention, if, if I'm a consultant, new employee, I'm covering for someone, I clearly see that this is an elastic IP used by this subnet and it has this IP address. Over here, we're getting the private IP address. So let's just try a command, curl check IP dot Amazon AWS dot com. Now at this point, we're going out and you notice that we get the 3231.54.162 and there you go. So if we go to the part two setup, what's really happening here, remember, even though we've got these EC2 instance connect endpoints, when we're going in, 
it's it's going and it's using its elastic IP to make the request to and from the internet. So when we do, sorry, wrong window. When we do the curl, we get the uh, the elastic IP. But you can see when we log on, we get the um, internal IP, which in this subnet will always be 10.0.3. Something. And a good um, practice is when you're in these, spell it right would help, to type uh, exit before you close the window. It's gotten a lot better now, but it used to hang things up. Okay, so now we see that we've connected from that. But if you remember, I told you we were logged on as root, Chameleon Tutorial. So now we're going to open Firefox. And on this one, we are going to um, try and do the exact same thing. So what we'll do is we'll refresh. And there are our EC2 instances. Now remember, <clears throat> this is a programmer. So let's go back to Brave and look at the programmer. This programmer has EC2 full access. So that programmer, that's all they have. I, I, you know, made it up. So if I go in here and I connect, because they have full access and I have a public IP, remembering I'm the programmer now, not root, I, um, I, I still can't connect because I don't have the valid credentials. And of course, it won't work for the private if it won't work for the public. So what we're going to do now, if you remember, we'll go back to here. And in the mapping, we set up this policy uh, in step 13. So we went through and the root user was all happy. We just got denied access. So that's our bummer. And so now what we're going to do, this is sticking a little bit. And what we're going to do now is go into IAM. And now I am as root user because I'm going to change the programmer. So when I go into the programmer, I see that this programmer just has the full access. So I'm just going to follow, add permissions. The, the, those are the instructions. In the, we're going to attach a policy directly. And we're going to just type in a few letters. Uh, oh, wait. Tutorial. There we go. You got to spell it right. So that was the one we created. So we're going to add this to the, to the programmer user and hit next. And now we'll see that this programmer user has both the EC2 and our policy that we created in step 13. So over here on Firefox, I always think it's a good idea to re refresh. And now we're going to try and log on to, say, a private with connect. Connect using the endpoint. And we will connect. And then at this point, we see that we're in. And if we did the curl check IP, it would be the same thing. It would give us the elastic IP. But this to me is a is a big difference of this tutorial because a lot of people don't tell you about this program or user thing and it's real easy to do a YouTube logged on as root and make everything work but now you know how to get these EC2 connection endpoints instance connect endpoints working for a non root user so with that I think we've found our happy face at the bottom. We just logged on as a programmer and did it again and this time it worked. So that brings us to the end of part two. Um, actually, no, it doesn't. Sorry about that. What we're going to do next is we are going to um, configure an access key and we'll do one for both the programmer and the root and then we'll configure our command line interface and then we'll log on again using a command line, AWS EC2 instance connect with the instance ID. So we'll do uh, the access key in the next section. Thanks for joining.
And now it's time to do a couple steps that will make it possible to work more like I work every day. A lot of it's from the command line. And uh, to do that, we're going to need to set up for the AWS command line interface. Um, in order to do this, you're going to need access keys. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. Over here, I'm logged on as root. So one of the ways I can do it is to drop this down, go to security credentials, and you're not supposed to, you're supposed to have multi-factor authentication. This is a tutorial account, but you see I have an access key here. Now, if I, if I didn't or I wanted to do a new one, I'd hit this create access key and it will give you an access key for that that you're signed on with. And it will also spark a warning because another, it's not a security course, but I'll just mention it here. You really shouldn't be giving access keys to the root user. There's a lot of reasons. It's better to make a group and give it administrator access, which is everything anyway, and then just assign users to the group. But this is a course, so we're just doing it as a lab. So if I wanted to bring down uh, or create an access key, I would. Uh, the other way we can do it, and what we're going to do right now, is we're going to go to the users and remember our programmer user. Now remember, I'm signed on as root. I'm the admin. I've already created an access key for this person, but if I uh, if none existed, I could create this access key, and for the command line interface, and then uh, you know th th this isn't best practices, but again I'm showing you that uh, that it can be done, and if you look at the instructions. Um, in the commands, let's just see that really quickly here. If we go to the commands and JSON button, um, I've got the um, configuration to to look at uh, which version you have. And then if it's not V2, the instructions on how to do that. But that be as it may, we're going to do um, click yes because this isn't a best practice security wise and this is going to be the AWS programmer user access key 2 because I created one so I'll create the access key you know I I could in fact there's the the uh, key I could copy and paste it I typically download a um, an access key CSV in Windows. It'll go to the download folder, and then we'll do that. So we've now gone through here. We've created our access key, and uh, we're ready to go. Um, when we come back, um, we're going to, number one, log on using the endpoint as root. And then log on again as uh, as the programmer. And to do that, we're going to have to um, have to uh, you know configure the ALS uh, AWS command line interface for each user. So I'll see you in a minute there because what you do, I'm going to open PowerShell, and uh, you then. PowerShell will assume an identity by doing this AWS configure. So we'll do that shortly. Okay, thanks. All right, so now we have the keys and we're ready to configure the Amazon Web Services command line interface. And uh, this is a very uh, common way to interface with, with the resources, especially if you're just looking to see something's up or um, uh, push something. So here we go. What is the CLI and why do we need to configure it? Well, if you remember, 
Over here, I'm signed on as Chameleon Metadata, and that's root. And I've opened Firefox oh, while well, I closed it. But if we go into Firefox, I've got a, um, a user called AWS Programmer User. So the two of them were, you know, are different accounts. Of course, this one is not root. This is how normally someone would log on. So I went into PowerShell and I did the AWS configure first so that um, it, it just returned garbage in there. I, I just typed, you know, random stuff. And I knew it wouldn't work. So then I ran the EC2 instance connect because right now this, aid, uh, this uh, Windows PowerShell, and I assume it works the same on Macs, but in your command prompt this this shell window does not understand that i'm aws programmer user it it doesn't understand that so when we go back to the other this is the the other uh, the brave account we created these keys for the programmer user and now where we're over here it doesn't understand that that's who i'm coming on as so what i need to do if you remember, one of the things we did, we don't need that, is we created these keys. And these uh, keys, we're going to need first the access key. I'm just copying it out of, out of the CSV. And that's why I say in the outline, do not lose these. So now I'm going into PowerShell, and I'm going to do AWS configure. And if you see up here, I just type nonsense. At this time, I'm going to actually give the values that came in when we generated the keys in the last module. And we're going to put that here. Here's another thing. Maybe it's because I'm older. I never hit it for the default. I always type everything so that there's no ambiguity that I want it at US East 1 and I want the output and text. Now that I've done that, I can close, I don't need to save that. So I can close uh, that CSV file. And at this point, having done this four steps with the key that was created by Amazon for the AWS programmer user, this... Um, PowerShell window now knows it's me. So I'm just going to use the up arrow. Well, I got to get focus. Up arrow, and then we're going to try it again. And now that it knows it's me, and in the earlier ones we attached the IAM policy, now it's okay. So what this does is it sets you up as a certain user. And one thing I'll show you. In mine, I, I have two versions of PowerShell, so I can rock two different users at the same time. Um, that's probably a little in the future for most people. But we just went through these things and did it, and we also um, just finished the demonstration as well. So at this point, let's go back here. Oh, and by the way, all this stuff is in the commands in JSON. It's just down here. And uh, right after section 15 that we just did, how to configure it all, it's all in there. We'll go back to the home. And let's just take a look at the picture where we're at now. So now we've got our EC2s and we've set up the EC2 instance connect endpoint, which is good. Um, but going forward, we're going to then add the systems manager and the session manager, which is the way I almost always log on if I'm the architect on a system or something and I just need to check something. So I hope this is valuable, these extra ways of logging on, and it would really mean a lot if you went and uh, left comments as to whether I should trim this part out or not with these two different connectors and how all the IAM policies work. But when we come back, we are going to create 
a new role and then we're going to uh, do a couple steps and eventually we're going to assign this role in step 16 to the EC2 instances because you can't use session manager unless they're acting under that role. So I'll see you shortly in section 16. Thanks for joining. Welcome back. We've arrived now at part three, the session manager, which is part of the systems manager group of functions in AWS. Before we finish that, let's go up to the top. Again, this URL is in the notes of the YouTube. And we are going to go to the VP setup first part two. So, well, actually, let's go part one. What we did in part one, four subnets, by that time, we had the four EC2s. The publics went through the NAT gateway directly. The privates went through, I'm sorry, the internet gateway directly. The privates went through the NAT gateway with an associated IP. And by that way, they could get to the um, internet. Then when we just finished part two, we added this top connection pipe. And we saw we can connect from the VP2 uh, I'm sorry, the EC2 dashboard in, uh, in AWS inside the VPC boundary or the AWS boundary. And then we could do a command line call from outside and come in using this EC2 instance connect endpoint. And now, as we come down to part three, we're going to add the, I don't know, purple, um, systems manager session manager another way to connect and this is the way i generally do a, a lot of the management day to day so we can close these two down and we'll go now like i say we're we've just got uh part three these all go pretty quick so we're going to do them all together in this section so here we go <clears throat> we'll just do 16 17 and 18 and then come back and do a demo. So we have to create this new role. And this is a service role. And in fact, if you try and connect what we're going to put into this role to, say, the AWS programmer work uh, role, it will not work. Because there's entity roles and service roles. And so this is a service role. And we're going to use it and attach it actually to the EC2 instances. So let's, uh, let's just go right into it and go to the console and follow the IAM roles. So we're going to go in. We're going to go to IAM, or we could put it in the search box. Uh, by now, you know there's a bunch of ways to get around. And we're going to go to roles. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a role, and it's a service role. We're just following these, service, use case, EC2. And this is for systems manager. So we are going to come down here and say EC2 on this, this. And down here, there is one for systems manager. And next, we get the instance, the manage instance core. So we're just going to do next. And, um, just keep going and hit the uh, create button. So we've added that next. The role name, we're going to call it tutorial VPC IAM role SSM. All right, so we're going to do for systems manager. Um, and this will, what this will allow us to do is assume a role on this case. So that's all we need to do there. We've got this managed instance core, and we're going to create the role. So here's our tutorial. And we've, at this point, gone through 16. We created the role. We gave it a name. Um, and then after creating it, what we're going to do is we're going to now add these two, uh, the patch association. I'm, I'm sorry, one. There'll be two at the end. So 
we're going to go to our new role and we're going to click that name and add permissions attach policies and in this case we have just typed TUT for tutorial and we're going to add that role we just created and uh, I'm sorry add the policy to this role so this is the one we created and then this is the one that came out of the box for the SSM managed core so at this point when we go back like we see we've got the two policies attached so now we've finished st step six next we're gonna check and let me zap this up a little bit here <clears throat> if you've never done this in your account you're gonna have to go in here and and click uh, the button and slide a switch to the right so I've I've done it on this account doing a, uh, a dry run for this part of the video so it won't come up but if you see that that's really what you want to do so over here in we can type systems or the whole thing we're looking for systems manager and then we're looking for fleet manager okay and in fleet manager we don't have that there so we have that's what this is all about just to make sure and um, if it asks for a role you uh, you give it the one you created now the next thing we need to do is we need to attach this role to the instance so what I'll just do here like you know this will get you there quickest if you type the red text so we'll just type EC2 and we'll go into there and the first thing we'll try and do is we'll just take a private one doesn't really matter we'll try and connect and you see there's no IAM profile attached to your instance so you're not going to be able to connect with that so first and this we're just going through step 18 here now we are going to um, check it and in actions security modify the IAM role you see it's empty we just created the tutorial IAM role and we're going to update it now this just might be because I've been doing it for a while and I don't know if you have to but every time I do something like this I'm going to reboot the instance and uh, we'll give it a few moments so with that we're done with section 18 and I'll come back and give you a uh, a demonstration on how to do it um, but we now have pretty much completed the course except for the demo if we go to the part three you know how all these lower piping and plumbing works because that was most of the video part two we did the EIC instance uh, connect and part this is part three with the systems manager and the main thing I wanted everyone to notice there's there's a lot of ways to connect and I'm trying to address a shortcoming I saw in other VPC articles in that they didn't show you how to actually get on to an EC2 instance if you weren't signed on as root so I hope I address that so I'll see you in a moment and we'll do the demo and now we come to the final demonstration of this tutorial what we're going to do now that we've attached the IAM you created and attached the IAM, IAM role to one of the EC2 instances we're going to go through a connection exercise and we'll see that when you sign on as root everything's groovy and that's how most of these videos go and you know it just seems ingenuous so we're gonna then sign on as a programmer and find out everything's not so cool then we're gonna go back to root make some changes and then sign on and hopefully get a uh, sunglassed smiley face on the programmer role so now that we've done the uh, steps 16 17 and 18 let's go into the systems manager so I'll just type uh, systems uh, 
systems manager. That's enough to get me there. And down here below, we're going to go into fleet manager. And we see the instance. I'm going to right click and say open it in a new tab. This is the private US East 1A EC2. So we see that that's running and managed. So we see that. You can add that role to the other instances and give it about five minutes. Sometimes it takes a minute to show up on Fleet Manager and uh, you should be able to, you know, turn them on or off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to EC2 and we're going to say our four instances. This is the one we attach the policy to. So we're going to connect and we're going to connect. And there we are. Now this is one maybe comes from being an old school programmer, but I would recommend against getting out of this with this X before you hit the terminate window. Um, that way it's a clean break. It's kind of like closing files in Python. Uh, a lot of times it's automatic, but if you're old school, you want an explicit close. So that's this. Oh, one other thing. Let's connect to that for a moment and we'll connect using SSM. And then we'll say, if I do a curl, a check IP dot Amazon AWS dot com, what we'll get is the elastic IP set up on this subnet. So that's how it's going out. It's still using, you know, the NAT gateway and the elastic IP when it bounces around inside the VPC. So we're going to terminate that puppy. Now what we're going to do though, let's, let's just take it because this is how most of the videos are. Okay, and then you go back and you can't do it back at your shop. So let's go into this typical AWS programmer. If you remember, we gave this guy the endpoint policy we wrote in part two and this person has EC2 full access. So since they have EC2 full access, uh, let's see how that works out. So I've got Firefox, and this is the AWS programmer, and we're gonna go into EC2, and look at our instance we did on you at private East 1A. So we're gonna go to this guy and connect and you see it won't let me connect because I'm missing some policy. Believe me, there's more than just this. This is just the first one because there's no identity-based policy that allows this describe instance. There's a few, like it has to do with sending the messages back and forth. So we'll go back to the instances on our programmer and I'm gonna minimize this. Now I'm back as root and in this so we've got our user here, the programmer, and we're going to add permissions. This is all in the, uh, in, in the um, outline over here. I'm just following the steps. So we're going to add permissions, and we're going to do uh, SMS full. Oh, sorry, SSM full. SSM full. And we want this SSM full access. Now again, this, this is where you get in. This isn't a security course, but you need a bunch of the policies. See, there's a bunch in here, and, and one of them has to do with um, starting a session so and creating channels and all of that. So you do need this. We'll bring that back. So we're going to add this, add permission. And now this person has the EC2, the SMS, and the one we created for the EC2 endpoint connect. Now I'm back as the programmer. I'm going to go into this and connect. 
refresh and yeah that sometimes it gets stuck so if you refresh I'm not pulling a fast one on the video I just refreshed because it might be cached I'm going in to connect and there's there's no message there now just the last one didn't pick it up and as you see we're connected as the programmer user so we had to add that extra that extra um, set of uh, that extra policy we made so with that we have now finished the entire course oh there is one more part down here now that we've got this we can uh, if we go into PowerShell now you remember for the EIC EIC -E endpoint we did this and this command is on the uh, commands link so this is the instance ID that we added the SMS policy to and um, I am right now I did the Amazon CLI conf AWS configure on the programmer right now not the root and if I hit that it should just start a session in a moment and there's our session and if we do our friend curl check IP dot Amazon a AWS dot com we'll get that elastic IP address again and again instead of terminate I recommend always doing the exit um, out of there because it's a clean close so that's this bottom part and uh, that's the end of the demo and we just did that not as root we did it uh, as as the programmer and what does that really mean well it means if we go over here when we go back to I think it was step uh, where was it uh, configure this remember we went into users and downloaded an access key I've got other ones if I go in into the uh, access keys and secret keys I've got the programmer this is another account um, but so I've got all those keys but however you do this configure AWS configure is the identity when you're on a PowerShell window that AWS will think it is so I really do hope you enjoyed this class real quick overview of what we did in part one we did what the VPC and more wizard did and mimicked it that would be the M for manual versus double W for the wizard the wizard didn't create NAT gateways and elastic IP so we did that ourselves and the wizard doesn't create EC2s we then went through and we connect using the dashboard but found we couldn't connect to private subnets with the dashboard so we added this EC2 instance connect endpoint and then we could connect now using that from the dashboard to go to the Amazon CLI we created a set of access keys for the programmer user and then we went through and we configured with AWS configure and we configured everything and we connected now using the both the root and the programmer and then we've just now finished the session manager so uh, please up here if you want to leave me a note uh, comments or put them in the YouTube I guess I, I, I think I'm supposed to say please like and follow me on YouTube and I really hope you enjoyed this course and you got more out of it than your normal YouTube video I know it was a little longer but we did co accomplish and cover a lot more material and don't forget all these um, these links up here and I'll see you in the next video thanks so much and talk to you soon Eric Thornton from chameleon metadata thanking you for joining us